to you from underneath a peach blossom it's time for an episode of be awesome find positivity throughout your life and work just like our mascot rooster steve the jerk Hello, Be Awesome listeners. This is episode 78 of the Be Awesome podcast. This is yet another great one that I get to share with you. The backstory on my guest today, his name is John McCaskill. He's a Navy SEAL, retired, now Deputy Executive Director for Veterans Path. We're going to get into that. And the creator of the mobile scrum board, which is hard to see on camera, but we'll show, talk more about that. Um, <laughs> A couple of months ago on LinkedIn, uh, Andrew Appleton, who's a past podcast ghost, uh, guest, an amazing human, uh, put a post out and John made a comment about the periodic elements and uh, I sent him a note and said, <laughs> hey man, I uh, appreciate the kind words. We'd love to send you a couple of be awesome coffee mugs. And he said, well, I'm, I'm actually in a camper, so I don't have an address and I'm in Colorado Springs. And I said, well, all the more reason for us to become friends because that's where I actually announced Be Awesome launching in June of 2008 lucky enough to have someone buy me dinner at the uh, top of the Broadmoor Hotel in the Penrose room, one of the most beautiful nice. places, one of the most beautiful places to eat. And uh, when I told Andrew about us meeting, he said, well, he's doing a commencement speech for me on June 5th, which also happens to be my birthday. So we are, we became immediate friends without ever talking. And we spoke for uh, uh, probably five or eight minutes when we were supposed to record this on Tuesday. And within uh, about a minute and a half, we were talking about uh, doctor's exams and getting checked for hernias. So uh, this is, if, if, if this is going to be anything like our eight minute talk, you guys are in for an amazing, amazing episode. And this is history in the making. First pod podcast that is going to have sponsors. So stay tuned because you're really going to want to hear about this. And Nikki Mental, the intro music is going to be back on after a hiatus for five months. I figured out how to add intro music back into my podcast. So without further ado, John McCaskill from the Car Studio in Where Are You, <laughs> USA, my friend. Welcome to the podcast. Oh, dude, thanks for having me, man. Uh, I really appreciate it. Like I said, just before you hit record, I've been kind of running around like a chicken with my head cut off, trying to get some things done, trying to get somewhat settled here in Colorado Springs, which is where I am. And you mentioned not having an address. I am literally sitting at the post office box. I just got myself an address. Uh, we still are in the RV, but I have an address so I can receive a Be Awesome mug, <laughs> which I would love. Um, and yeah, we are we are getting settled here. We've got a house uh, that will be close, or rather we'll be closing on a house in October. Um, and yeah, Colorado Springs will be home for, for now. Um, so sorry, uh, sorry for my car studio, but no, nah, dude, you sound you sound is better than most, so that's it's working great. Um, right on. So let's talk about this. I mentioned you were a Navy SEAL. Let's yes, talk sir. about let's talk about you growing up first. Oh, that was my dog okay. screeching. If you heard that, I don't know what she's doing. I did. Uh, I did. Yeah, she's a disaster. All good, man. I, I uh, the last podcast I did, I had my dog all over me. I mean, like yeah. I said, I'm living in the RV, so my space is limited, yeah. and uh, the dog was on my lap and in my face. So that doesn't bother me at all, man. Yeah. She's coming over now. She's 145 pound South African borble, and she is just a big. Baby, oh no way! So yeah, yeah. But uh, so back to back to growing up. When did you yeah. know you? When did you know you wanted to go into the service? What was your upbringing like? I mean, did you watch the 1990 hit Navy SEALs with Charlie Sheen and drinking <laughs> Tiger Blood? And you're like, hey, I want to do that. Jump out of cars and <laughs> into the water and stuff. Yeah, actually, I think it goes back a little bit further than that. And uh, funny enough that your dog is South African. I was born in South Africa. I was born in Cape Town, South Africa. Uh, lived there until I was seven years old. Uh, well, between Cape Town and Johannesburg. And then, uh, and then moved to the States when uh, I was seven. Um, my parents moved us to the States primarily um, because the government was uh, quite honestly kind of falling apart and uh, we didn't believe in apartheid. Uh, we believed in equal rights for, for all men and women and uh, moved to the States because that's what we saw the US believing in. Now granted, um, even since then, the US has come a long way, but South Africa has kind of, um, had some rough times so bottom line they moved us to the states because they saw a better future for us um they also moved us to the future and this here's some irony here or sorry they, they moved us to the states 
because uh, they wanted to me and my brother not to have to serve in the military because South Africa has conscription, so you could still get drafted, or at least right. back then you could. Um, so we came over here, and when I was 19 years old, I just turned 19, I, I uh, enlisted in the Navy. Um, but to answer your question, what kind of inspired it uh, was the A-Team, man. Uh, oh, watch the B.A. Baracus. Yeah. <laughs> B.A. Baracus and, and Murdoch and, uh, you know, uh, you know, whenever, uh, what's his name, would always say at the end of the show, I love it when a plan comes together. Yeah. I, I, I thought, hey, that's what, uh, that's what I want to do. I want to do special operations even before I knew what special operations were. Now, granted, they were, you know, a Green Beret A-Team. Yeah, that had kind of gone AWOL, and I ended up going to the Navy SEALs. But uh, that came from the, the Navy SEAL side. The desire to go into the SEALs was from my youth. Uh, I had been, uh, even though I grew up in Louisiana, I would spent a lot of time um, in the Gulf there in the, in the ocean. My parents would take us there to spend summer vacations. I spent a lot of time in the pools. I was a lifeguard growing up. Um, so... I was just naturally drawn to the water. And then I wanted to be part of a small kind of elite group because in high school I'd been a runner and we were a small team, but we were damn good. And we were really, really tight like brothers. So I was like, okay, well, what, what small team is out there um, really tight knit and, and surrounded by the water most of the time. And, and uh, I joined the SEALs from that. Funny enough, most of my time in the, in the teams and the SEAL teams was not in the water at all. Even even though I, I was at a SEAL delivery vehicle team, which is primarily supposed to operate in or under the water, uh, I spent most of my time deployed. I spent in Afghanistan and Iraq, uh, which, you know, there's not a whole lot of water around there. Yeah, no, so, it's mo mostly in bottles. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. You know, talking about what seals in the water, I'll get back to you. Uh, last year, you probably know who this person is because the, there's like 2,500 seals in the, in the world today. Um, but I was at, at Norfolk Airport flying out, and the person in front of me had a EOD badge on uh, a patch on his backpack. And I'm like, oh, you're yeah. EOD. And he said, yeah. And we started talking. He was, he was in SEAL in the EOD, and his expertise was with uh, dolphin training. You know, training oh, the dolphins yeah. to go. Mammals. To, yeah, he's he's based in Virginia yeah. Beach. You probably know who he is. Great, great guy. Uh, we talked for about an hour. I was just like fascinated by what, but he, but he was always in the water. Uh, you know, yeah. he, was, he was he was always always uh, out there in the water. So uh, so you grew up. You're a runner. Love the A team. I love the A team. I loved a lot of the uh, '80s. I was a big Chips fan. So I, you know, I want to yeah. I want to be a cop. Thanks to John yeah. Baker and yeah, Eric Estrada, Frank Poncharello, more teeth than a shark. <laughs> Uh, you know, and, and uh, so, so you end up growing up doing exactly what your parents don't want you to do. You actually went to, right. you went to the uh, Naval Academy in Annapolis. Yeah, I, I sure did. I actually enlisted first. I was a parachute rigger in the Navy uh, just for a short time, just uh, just shy of a year, uh, and then get, got picked up from, from the enlisted ranks to go into the Naval Academy. Um, went there, obviously, four-year school got my degree in mathematics and then uh, got selected out of there with some of my friends to go out to BUDS, basic underwater demolition, SEAL training out in Coronado, California. Class 238 initially <laughs> got rolled into 239, um, went through a winter hell week. And uh, that's, that's always amongst SEALs, you know, bragging rights if you go through a winter hell week or if you go through a summer hell week because winter hell weeks, colder, longer nights, uh, summer hell weeks, you get the crap kicked out of you a little bit harder uh, than, than you do in the, in the winter because in the winter, the elements take care of it. Um, so there's bragging rights on both ends of that spectrum. But uh, anyway, went through class 239 and went uh, out from SEAL training in Coronado uh, out to SDV Team 2 on the East Coast uh, prior to it being decommissioned, which it has recently been recommissioned um, but anyhow did some work with them uh, for three and a half years and then bounced around between the SEAL teams the special boat teams uh, and then some of the joint um, special operations units that are out there I, I did not ever do time at the at the tier one level uh, 
kind of the, 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 t- the tier that everybody reads about, hears about, sees on the news. But uh, I did I did bounce around uh, quite a bit, um, even within Virginia Beach. I, I did different teams out there. It's funny, like everybody thinks that uh, the SEALs are like the SF groups and that you've got the SF groups all over the world, kind of all over the country. Really, primarily the SEALs are East and West Coast. Uh, we have one group out in Hawaii, but primarily – uh, most of our guys are in Virginia Beach area or down in San Diego. Uh, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's a little bit about my time in the teams and, uh, and how I got there. So, a couple questions. Uh, sure. <laughs> 2000, 2001, you graduated Naval Academy in May, which was yep. just a couple months before 9-11. But let's go back to your, gradu- right. let's go back to your graduation. What's the river right there in, in Annapolis? Right by the the uh, that's the yeah the Severn the Severn, Severn River. So so last year Les Trackman, great friend of mine, uh, hooked, took me out in his boat on the Severn River, and I got the the Blue Angels were literally I thought the air show was for me. What was <laughs> what what was it like sitting through commencement and having the most amazing air show being done in celebration of your accomplishment? Yeah, uh, so a couple of things there. Uh, I think you're the first person to ever asked me this. But um, it rained or it was drizzling uh, on my commissioning. So we had President Bush speaking, but the Blue Angels did not fly over our graduation. So no something that way. I looked forward to for four years uh, didn't happen. But we did have the Blue Angels do the show, you know, that, that yeah. whole week. It's commissioning week. And they fly, they fly over the Seven River. Um, and my family was up there visiting at the time. My nephew... I mean, he must have been one and a half years old, maybe two. And I was, I had pumped him up this whole week or, or just before he came out. I was like, yeah, the Blue Angels, they're going to fly over, do the show, do the show. And he was super excited. And as soon as the first jet flew over, he wanted to hide because it was so loud, right? They were right oh, yeah. there, right? I mean, like flying under the bridge there in the Severn, yeah. doing all their stunts. And he wanted nothing to do with it. So he had to go and hide inside a building while, while the rest of the family watched the show. But um, that week is something else. You know, there's uh, there's the Blue Angels. There's uh, formal dances for some of the upperclassmen. That's when the freshmen climb the the monument there. Um, oh, man. Herndon Monument. Wow. Yeah. I space for a second. Yeah, climb to the top of that monument, rip off the, the plebe uh, hat and replace it with an upper-class hat. And that's kind of the end that signifies the end of their plebe year. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of things going on that week. It's, it's just loaded. And at the, uh, so Friday was graduation, May 25th, uh, graduation. Uh, my family flew out that night back to Louisiana. And I, I think I went home to my apartment because at that time now I was no longer a midshipman. I had an apartment. I went back home to my apartment and I slept for like 16 hours. <laughs> I was so freaking smoked from that yeah. week. It was so much fun, but I was just exhausted. Yeah. Um, yeah, I woke up like the next afternoon. It was, yeah. it was crazy. So, well, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm, good, good I'm, week. I'm gonna invite myself for the next time that the commencement happens, and I'm gonna invite you, and I'm gonna tell Les, I'm gonna ask him for a, a plus one on the invite for the next commencement. <laughs> he he has the best uh, anchor spot. These pilots, well, back in those days, and by the way, I thought that happened because I searched high and low, and I found I, I think it was the New York Times or Wall Street Journal, and they have photos of the, what was supposed to be the commencement with the Blue Angels flying over. So I didn't realize it didn't happen. So I apologize yeah. for bringing up a, no. uh, something that didn't happen that was, like, exciting. But the, back then, oh, they dear. used to fly under the bridges. They can't do that anymore because there's so many boats yeah. out in the river. And because it, technically, I mean, it's probably some danger, seeing as how the, there's, like, 50 feet between the water and the bridge. But the sure. skill the skill in the show was just nothing short of – like it was just amazing. I think of talking about it, I'm getting excited. Um, yeah. So, uh, so you get into sales and talk about Virginia beach. So here's a question for you. You may or may not be able to answer, but this is something I've been, I've been, I've been wanting to find someone to see if there's truth to it or not. I, <laughs> so, so I lived in Virginia beach for a period of time, 97, 98, a couple years down there. I had an apartment at the uh, mouth of the Lynn Haven river, right next to the, where the duck Inn used to be. The duck Inn. Yeah. Bingo. So it was like, I think it was Tuesday morning. So I get up early every morning. I go out on my balcony. I think it was Tuesday mornings. I go out and have my coffee. And somewhere between 
four and five thirty in the morning. These black vans would show up with these Zodiac boats and a bunch of dudes would jump into the water and just start swimming until you couldn't see them anymore. And I always figured it was because they were picking up the current of the Lynn Haven. And I always just assumed those were seals in their morning swim out to sea thing. Cause it was, it was wild how they come in and then the vans would take off. Was that you guys? Yeah. Uh, that, that very well could have been, I mean, like, uh, back in the late nineties, early two thousands, uh, we did a lot of running and run, swim runs. Uh, yeah. you know, the, the, the bus would take us or the vans would take us out to do a swim. You would swim from one point to another, get out, run to another point, jump back in the water and do another, another bit. So that was, uh, you know, one of the PTs for the week. Sometimes we would throw in the optical course, uh, there on, on Little Creek base, yeah. um, or, or, you know, some uh, team PT there on the on the compound where we do, you know, regular weights and push-ups, all the standard stuff. Since then, um, I think we've gotten a lot smarter about how we do PT. Yeah. Uh, we, we try not to break ourselves, get stronger. We've got uh, incredible human performance coaches that run us through stretching, uh, run us through uh, weight training that is better for you better for your performance uh, you know how often are you going to be on the battlefield bench pressing right right i mean we still do bench press because that's just kind of a, a point of performance that we all look at each other and beat our chest and say hey we can bench press x number of pounds uh which i was never a, a huge bench press guy but anyway um it may very well have been seals or eod guys jumping out in the water and, and swimming until you couldn't see them anymore it still is a 22 year mystery as to who it was but it was amazing <laughs> I went out and bought a pair of binoculars because that's how far out they swim. That's one of the most, so that's actually one of the coolest places in the world, right? Because you've probably saw it a million times. Every morning, the dolphins would swim out of Chesapeake Bay yep. in, in a line. And then every night they'd swim back. And it, it's just a, right. a daily show. And then you couple that with God knows what's going to fly or go by in the water. I mean, you have a stealth bomber if they had the show, air show out of Oceana, just buzz, yeah. by, buzz by the beach. I mean, talk about one of the coolest places to, uh, to hang out and be it's built up a ton now since since back yeah. then you know the duck, duck in doesn't even exist anymore no right? it doesn't they they they, yeah. they they i think they were gonna make condos out of it or something but that was yeah, that was did. that was old virginia beach right that yeah. was like that was the epitome and it was every single spot and then there was a restaurant across the road i'm trying to think they had the best black and blue burger you could ever have yeah. it wasn't it wasn't that Bubba's, yeah. The big yep. place that would close down every six months and rename itself behind it was Bubba's. They had the <laughs> best, best black and blue burgers anywhere. I mean, if, I hope that place is still open at least. But uh, yeah, it's old stomping grounds, a great place. Yeah, man. So That's crazy. I'm sure we've crossed paths then. Oh, yeah. Because uh, yeah. even, even before I graduated, I, I would go down to Virginia Beach. You know, that was our, as a midshipman, we'd either go to uh, Ocean City, Maryland uh, yeah. as our spring break or down to Virginia Beach. So. Two amazing yeah. places, yeah, yeah. I actually got, I, uh, I had a, in a previous life in the in, in the late '90s. I got let go, fired from a from a software company when I first started, and uh, I thought I would find life by moving to Virginia Beach. My my original goal was to like rent beach umbrellas and and uh, towels and things for people right on the on the uh, Atlantic side, and uh, that didn't work out. I found some other odd jobs for like six months and ran it hard down there. Yeah, I had a great time. What was the name of the the pier? Uh, there was a pier bar on the Atlantic side, uh, old old Virginia Beach too. I got to think of um, uh, uh, Ocean An Ocean. Is it Ocean Annie's? Is that the name of it? Uh, maybe I don't. Yeah, uh, I, I know Chicks Beach, Chicks Oyster. Yeah, Oyster that was bar. good too. Yeah, I think, I think it was yeah. Ocean Annie's or Ocean Eddie's. I, there's a picture of me on their wall, not allowed in there anymore. <laughs> I think they closed as well. So. Uh, no, a lot of good times before nine before nine eleven hit. You used to go out to the uh, Oceana Air Force Base or the Oceana yeah. Air Base, and they have the Eternal Flame burning there right on yeah. the side. I can't remember yeah. what road yeah. that is, but back before yeah, nine eleven, you used to be able to go behind that, go closer to the to the runway, and just hide in the high grass and just watch yeah. the jets at night. Just go out there with a six wow. pack of beer, just sit back. Nobody would <laughs> nobody would bother you. Now they come out with you know assault rifles and tell you to leave yeah. nicely. Yeah. Um, so, so, so we walked down memory lane, you served our country for a number of years. You've, you've been to Afghanistan and Iraq and probably countless other places. And, uh, and you know, when I first met you, you know, there's this, there's this mindset that, that you have about, especially Navy SEALs, right? 
10 foot tall, bulletproof, nothing bothers you, nothing gets to you. You, you, can, you can take it all. Marcus Luttrell, probably the most well-known. I've, I've actually met him and been, seen him speak, you know, the, the, the yeah. taking his hand and crossing it over every six inches and crawling and surviving the way that he had. And, and I know that he went through a lot of, of difficulties, but he still has that bravado of like, I can withstand anything, right? Um, but you've had some challenges and you're now exiting as a, as a, as a Navy SEAL war veteran and you're now repotting yourself in Colorado Springs doing something I think is just absolutely needed um, and, and needs more exposure to, which is this veteran's path. How did you get there? How did you find that as a, as a source to help you? And, and yeah. what does that, that all look like? Yeah, so uh, it, it actually is tied to Marcus uh, in, a, in a kind of roundabout way, Marcus Patrell. Uh, I was deployed with Marcus on the, the, um, that whole deployment back in 2005. Um, June 27th, he and, you know, three of my brothers, uh, <clears throat> Matt Axelson, Danny Dietz, um, and, and Michael Murphy were sent out on a surveillance and reconnaissance mission. And um, as, as you well know that they were uh, compromised by some goat herders who turned around and told the villagers they were there, got into a massive gunfight. Um, long story short, three of those guys, the three that I just mentioned, were killed. Uh, Marcus was a lone survivor. The quick reaction force, one of the helicopters was shot down, lost another eight, eight SEALs. And, the, and eight Army Night Stalkers in, in that operation, Operation Red Wings. Uh, that was June 28th. They in, had inserted on June 27th, 2005. June 28th is when they were all uh, in those gunfights and, and when the helicopter was shot down. Um, isn't that, that is kind of indirectly tied to how I am now with Veterans Path um, is I struggle with that because I, I knew those guys, um, you know, I knew some of their wives, there was uh, a chance that I was supposed to be on that operation and I was pulled off at the last second. Um, I was uh, um, going to be on the QRF, the, one of the, the helicopters that got shot down and got pulled off that as uh, what's called a liaison officer. I ended up being stuck as the liaison officer working with the staff guys, which was not a sexy job, but it was very important. And uh, when that helicopter got shot down, there was a lot of, um, you know, why them? Why did they? Why did they die? And I'm still here alive, right? Um, so I battled with survivor guilt from that. I battled with uh, some uh, post-traumatic stress from that, and some other operations that had happened uh, a few years down the line. And uh, the Navy had given me different medications to deal with that that stress and anxiety, the depression that I was feeling. Uh, the survivor guilt, and they were they were also giving me talk counseling, and that was helpful to a point. So was the medication to a point, but I think that the medication kind of turned me into somebody that I wasn't. And uh, and finally, I got a, a counselor who recommended meditation um, instead of medication, and I tried it, and I um, felt a little bit of relief from the initial meditation, but. It wasn't really long lasting. So I went back to the doctor after meditating for a couple of weeks and told them, Hey, look, this is uh, this is not working for me. What, what else do you have? What else do you recommend? And he, he laughed at me and, and told me, Hey, look, this is uh, this is like going to the gym for two weeks and thinking that you're going to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. It doesn't work that fast and takes some time. So I continued to practice meditation for uh, a, a few months, and that's when I started to notice the long-term effects actually staying in place. Like, I started to feel better about who I was, where I was. I started to communicate better with friends and family and coworkers. Um, some of the things that had been underlying that I had suppressed uh, bubbled to the surface, and I was able to take those issues and actually address them with the talk counselors that I was seeing. And so it... I feel uh, deep down that meditation not only changed by my life, but quite frankly, saved my life. And I, I went, from, uh, went from that, I had a friend tell me, hey, look, you need to start thinking about what it is you want to do when you get out of the Navy. 
And I thought, hey, well, I'm going to found a nonprofit that teaches meditation to military members and, and veterans. And then lo and behold, Veterans Path exists. It already exists and I didn't have to found it. Uh, so I fell in with them as their deputy executive director. Uh, and that's what we do. We teach mindfulness and meditation to to veterans and uh, active duty service members to help to address some of the demons that they may be seeing, feeling, uh, and experiencing. Um, and it does, in fact, change and save their lives. So that's what, uh, that's what I'm doing now. I did it as an intern uh, while I was still active duty uh, for about uh, seven months or seven or eight months. And, uh, and then at the beginning of this month, August, uh, I, I retired officially from the Navy and started officially as a paid employee with Veterans Path. Now, that all said, Veterans Path, we've, we've had to change our, our model because we do in-person retreats, but COVID-19 has thrown a big time wrench in that, and, uh, and we've started doing online stuff. But the good side of that is we can do more with online. It's not as, it's not as effective as face-to-face, but we can do more so that there's more quantity. You can cast uh, you know, a wider we're net. Able to, yeah, cast, exactly. Yeah. Cast a much, yeah, exactly. Cast a much wider net, um, talk to more veterans about what it is they've got going on, introduce them to these life-changing and life-saving skills um, and ultimately save, save more lives. So that's what, uh, that's what we do with Veterans Path. Yeah. You want to know one of the things that, and, and, and not to, bring my I've had a a therapist for going on 13 years now and I've suffered from different um we can call it depression you can call whatever you want he actually he he actually suggested mindfulness and mindful meditation to me years ago um yeah and and I I was I was the guy that expected results in the gym I I was suggested to read Awake at Work by Michael Carroll and some other books which I did and learned about some of the processes and uh and uh probably a week or so into it you know I was just trying to take a block of time off every day to just try to set myself and do nothing and ground myself. And what I found, what I found was very quickly um, was I was out doing yard work one day and I was feeling all this, you know, anxiety, whatever you want to call it. And I'm like, I just need to stop for a few minutes. And so I stopped and I sat down and I just kind of took in the sounds of the birds and everything. And the next thing, you know, I hear my fiance, next thing, you know, I hear my fiance running out screaming and uh, I jump up and she says, are you okay? And I said, well, yeah, why? And she says, you look like you were dead. I go, oh no, I was, <laughs> I was meditating. I fell asleep. I literally fell down on my side. I was laying in the yard, all the, the rake and everything I just put down and I looked like I was dead. But I, uh, I, I took, <laughs> I, took the, was scary. I took the whole relaxation to a whole nother level and was just out cold sleeping. Um, yeah. But you know, there's something to be said for it. First of all, it's a practice that has to continue. I need to get more, I need to get more in tune with myself with doing it, uh, getting doing it again, because that pressure right now, especially um, it's huge. But one of the things that I'm finding and seeing when I'm talking to people about yoga, meditation, um, and mindfulness and other things with, 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 with COVID is two things. One, you can cast a much wider net. And two, your audience is, is a lot of times they're reluctant to come to you in person because it, it, yeah. it, 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 it provides them a level of discomfort or uncomfortableness. Um, them being able yeah. to be in the comfort of their own home and just listening in or just watching being a fly on the wall that gives them such a feeling of, of an added feeling of, of that security or feeling that they can get started. You get them sure. going. And then when we get out of COVID, you can start doing those in-person programs again. I think, it's, I think it's great. And I think the fact that you guys have adapted and you, and you haven't stopped um, is, is needed and necessary. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. That, uh, you're, you're spot on, man. That anonymity. I think we've actually had more people sign up for the online stuff, not just because of the availability of the online but because of the anonymity, they can, they can come on, you know, sign on uh, under some username. We don't know who that username is. They, they, uh, they go through it. They don't have to tell us what they've been through um, or, or any of that. And it's, it's definitely helpful. I think there are people who are signing on now that would not have come to the, the uh, in-person events. Yeah. I think on. It's the hardest thing. And I can't imagine being military, especially special forces and Navy SEALs or, any, you know, EOD or any, any other, that's going through something. I think that that one, our ego gets in our way, right? Even myself, I need to be 10 foot tall and bulletproof for my family. It took me a long time to admit the only reason why I do share the, the fact about having, getting therapy and doing some of these things that I do and I practice is because I want people to know it's okay. Like, uh, you know, it, it, yeah. it's, it's, yeah. it's more than okay. It's, it's a necessity. It's a necessity. 
um, you know, I always, I think I put in a post that you'd seen on LinkedIn. You know, when I was giving my keynotes in person, I always say that in the audience is one out of three people that is dealing with something traumatic in their life. Death, disease, yeah. divorce, depression, it doesn't discriminate. Um, and, there, and that you can't be expected to tackle it all on your own. You need to you right. need to seek out help because you don't want and it's a comment you made in one of your posts that I, I say a lot of time is don't ever make a permanent decision a permanent decision on a temporary problem you know and that's yeah. the sadly what we're what we're dealing with in the world right and and um, right. I think that the program is phenomenal um, you know well, you thanks, and I, man. yeah um, no I think what you're doing is and, and you've got a team with you I looked at the the site a little bit you got a whole team of folks and it's been around how long has the veterans path been around yeah it, we were founded in 2008 um, sorry I lost you there for a second right. uh, we're, right we're, yeah founded in 2008 uh, by uh, Lee Lesser and Chris Wharton and it was actually uh, originally called honoring honoring the pathway of the warrior and uh, now has been rebranded as Veterans Path. Um, but yeah, that's, it's, it's grown since then. And it, it was limited by the face-to-face -face thing. I think the online, uh, with COVID, we kind of accelerated our online presence. And that has allowed us to scale and it will further allow us to scale. The ultimate goal is to bring what it is we're doing, what it is we're teaching, to every transitioning service member so that is actually a part of transition because transition out of the service is in and of itself, I won't say traumatic, but it is a stressful time. Um, you kind of lose your tribe, if you will. You lose your sense of purpose. You lose your sense of mission. And a lot of veterans feel as though they're lost when they get out. And giving them these tools allows them to deal with that stress and be more resilient through that process, uh, through that transition process. It's uh, hugely important. And I want to go back to, uh, you know, what you talked about with your keynotes with, you know, one in three people dealing with something traumatic. Um, Jason Redman, a fellow SEAL uh, guy that was shot up uh, pretty bad. And, and now he's a motivational speaker, author. He's a great guy, Jason Redman. Um, he did a keynote for, for Veterans Path back in February, when we were actually all able to get together, right? And uh, he talks about being on the X. When you're, uh, when you're an operator, uh, being on the X is when you're on the, the target. The X is the target. So uh, you talk about you know, going to the X or offsetting from the X. The X is the target. Well, his, his kind of analogy there of the X is something that you're dealing with that's traumatic in your life. And every person is in in this world basically is either in a traumatic experience right now they're dealing with it some form or fashion they've just come out of one or and this is where he kind of gets a giggle from the the the, the crowd is like or bad news if you're not in one of those two groups guess what you're about to experience one you're most likely either in a traumatic experience you've just come out of one or in some form or fashion, you're about to go into one. So he talks about developing re resilience and uh, getting off that X uh, to, to really find a, a better place mentally. Um, I don't want to steal Jason's stuff, so I'm giving all of that credit to him. That's his, his talk. Uh, Jason Redman, great guy, again, shot up uh, overseas and, uh, and lived to tell about it. And he's, he's really doing great things with his his talks, his uh, speeches, and his books. So, um, yeah, if you're listening to this, chances are you're either in a traumatic experience, you've just come out of one, or or bad news is you're probably going to yeah, go into it's one. Coming. It's, it's, it's yeah. coming. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah. Um, and that's and that's truth. I mean, I, and, I, and I never looked at the statistics on the, the numbers. I always tried to figure out, when I first started getting into keynote speeches and things, I had this unrealistic expectation that I was going to help everyone. And then yeah, as, I, yeah. as, I, as I started doing it, I was like, yeah, there's people that aren't engaged. There's people that are already past something or people that already know something or whatever. There's probably a different group. And then it, you, you dwindle the group down. And they go, well, I just want to help one person in the audience. That's all I want to look to do. And if yeah. I do that, then I'm successful. And then, but as I started going through, and I definitely caught it in the smaller audiences that it was at the end, like if I had 20 people in the audience and we're just giving it as a number especially in the smaller 
uh, setting stuff that I, I that I might do, six would come up to me. So basically, it was yeah. you know one and three, and that happened a number one of and times. Three. And so, and they would share with me these stories that I'm just like, they don't come up to. I never have somebody come up to me like, hey, my life is great, everything's fantastic, thanks for making me happy today. It's always like, yeah, I, I didn't feel a sense of purpose, and now I do. Or I had this happen to me, and I can't seem to get out of my own way, or whatever. So. It, right. Over time, I was just like, it's like one in three people, like every third seat, somebody's in it. And, you know, one of the, yeah. things, that, one of the things that I didn't think about are the people that just came out of it, that maybe they should need to remember that resiliency that they had so that they right. can be prepared for the next thing that happens. Because it is, it's a cycle. We're always dealing, right. we're always going to have in some, some process of that. I love that. I'm gonna, I, I wrote his name down. I'm going to definitely get some of his books and things. Um, yeah, he's got great books, man. So I want to do two more things. I know we're running probably. I don't, I don't want to take too much of your time up. First of all, this thing. This is how the whole podcast got started. I got to figure out how to get the light yeah. to work on it and where I am in the whole scheme of things. But yeah. this, is, this is one of the most simple, genius things that you could do for twenty four ninety nine, And it's something you <laughs> put out, right? Right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Look, here's the deal. Everybody can get more organized. Nobody's like, I'm perfectly organized unless somebody that's completely OCD and then they just drive you crazy because they're just like overly <laughs> organized. Right. Um, right. but this is how we, this is how you and I got here, uh, to this point. Um, yeah. you put a post that you were launching a product on Amazon and you're hoping people would buy it and review it. One of the greatest yeah. sales tactics out there. I'm a salesman by, by trade. Um, I always tell people ask for the sale, ask for the rev review, ask for your supporters. So many people start a business or start something, and they don't go into their phone that has a thousand contacts, direct contacts that they know to ask right. them to help. And so you've probably sold a whole bunch of these things. Tell yeah, us about okay. it and what you're doing, where to get it. And then I want to. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's funny. It's all tied to stress, actually, funny enough. So I found that when I, when I wasn't staying organized and on top of what I needed to get done, I was feeling stress and anxiety and and obviously the meditation that we've been talking about, that helped out a lot. But then uh, a friend of mine, an EOD commander, uh, was in charge of one of the EOD teams out on the East Coast. Um, he introduced me to Scrum. Scrum is a project management framework that allows you to, to really get through tasks, get uh, through um, products, develop products, develop iterations of products. Um, Anyway, he, he introduced me to that and I really became fascinated with it. Started reading uh, all the books on Scrum. I got certified as a Scrum master and a Scrum product owner. And Scrum is typically divided uh, or set up for teams to use. And I was like, man, it would be great if there was some way to use this as an individual at work or an individual in, uh, you know, with my family uh, or whatever. So... Uh, I was dabbling around with some dry erase boards with a buddy of mine. And I was like, look, I created my own, uh, my own personal team uh, or my own personal scrum board. And he was like, well, you know, it'd be great is if it was magnetic and it folded. And I was like, dude, I think you're onto something. Uh, <laughs> so we, we, we worked through it. Uh, we've had multiple iterations, some of them better than others, but I think the one that you just ordered is the, is the best one out there. It's on, it's available on Amazon. Uh, with and without magnets, but basically it's just using Scrum, again, the project management framework uh, on an individual level, and it's something that you can take everywhere. And when, when I did advertise it on LinkedIn, I had a lot of people say, well, why don't you just develop an app? Well, the, the whole point is that it's not electronic because so many times when we go into our phone, into our, our, our digital or our virtual to-do lists, we get distracted by all the notifications that are on our phone. We get distracted by the emails, the uh, social media that's on there. And before you know Angry it, Birds. Wasted... Angry Birds. Angry Birds distracts me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So before you know it, you've wasted an hour of your time. Whereas this thing's very simple. You set it up right in front of you. It's, it's in front of you all day. It's got your, you know, your to-do list, what you're doing now, what you have to do and what you've done. And there's, uh, there's science to that. As you move things across the columns, you actually get little dopamine hits and you start to feel better about getting stuff done through your day. And uh, anyway, it's, it's out there on Amazon for everyone. Uh, it's just called the Scrum on the Go board. So check it out on, on Amazon. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's taken off. Um, I'm really happy with, with where it is, um, but it can always do better. So if you're, uh, if you're interested in getting more organized and, and getting 
what what I say GSD is getting stuff done, yeah. <laughs> uh, then yeah, it's uh, it's a great tool for that. Yeah, EOD EOD guys get stuff done. Uh, yeah, our, our thirteen year old's godfather is EOD. Uh, he's out Dude, in San Diego. Some of the best out there. Yeah, he's now uh, in some some special group doing uh, shallow water explosive finding or. Oh know, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uncle Dave, something else. Um, well, have I missed anything? I think we covered all the bases. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's the most of it, man. Um, we could do a couple uh, of these in an RV. <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, hence again, I think I covered this at the beginning. Hence my my car office right now. Yeah, but yeah, my wife, my wife. Uh, I've got two kids, a little three-year-old uh, daughter and a one-year-old boy and, uh, and a puppy, and we're all living in the RV. Um, uh, the plan was originally to drive around the country in that thing for six to 12 months. Uh, COVID has thrown a little wrench in that because some of the places that we had planned to see were closed, and even some of the routes that we had planned to drive were closed uh, because of COVID. Um, and then, uh, and then honestly, I, I think we bit off more than we could chew. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just to be completely honest, uh, the, the three-year-old, the one-year-old, the dog in, a, in an RV is, uh, is pretty tight quarters. So we're going to wait until they can take care of themselves uh, a little bit better than they are right now. Uh, obviously, they're not yeah. doing a whole lot of taking care of themselves at their age. But yeah, that's the, I guess the last piece about me, John McCaskill, is uh, I, I, I volunteered for a six to 12 month RV trip that is uh, definitely got shortened down to about four or five months. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that. Cause we actually have talked about an RV trip for a while and we've got the three dogs, a cat, a litter box trained lion headed rabbit, uh, two goats, what? chickens, guinea hens, and a fish named Fred. And I said, all of those have to expire before I even consider <laughs> an RV. And our two and a half year old yep. chance is hell on wheels, Captain Chaos. And uh, I, he can't be confined to even the big bus RV. And so we have to get like a separate, yeah. a separate area for him to, uh, to travel in for long distances. But he loves yeah. you know, trucks and buses and vans and everything. So I might have to do that. Well, yeah, that's my, my boy too, man. He's hell on wheels. My girl was, uh, was pretty, hell on, pretty much hell on wheels until my boy started walking and running. And I was like, yeah. wow, wow. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Danny always. Well, cool, man. This has been a lot Danny, of fun. D Danny always. Well, I'm not done yet. I got one more thing. Danny always, okay. gave, okay. da Danny always gave us the uh, the understanding and, and feeling that we were great parents and we could have more kids. Chance gave us the reality that two is more than enough. So we love we <laughs> yeah, love them, we love them both. But man, oh man, two yeah. completely completely Dude. different. And everybody says that they're like, you don't get two yeah. kids. You don't get two perfect kids that. You know, or polite no. and everything else. They're both just amazing. I uh, love, you know, love them both. They're yeah. so full of different. Um, my wife, uh, my wife's joke is that if my son had been born first, uh, we would only have one child. <laughs> <laughs> I think we quietly, I think we quietly make that joke over here too. <laughs> so, um, so listen, um, you and I spoke for the first time a couple of days ago, two days ago. Um, yeah, and then that that very brief uh, conversation. Um, you had put a video out on on um, on on LinkedIn about losing one of your team members uh, to suicide. Sure. Um, veterans sure. Veterans Path is obviously looking to um, to help prevent the twenty one of the twenty at least start somewhere. We got to start somewhere. Twenty two right. veterans are killing themselves every day. Um, I just sense you know some pain in in your voice talking about it two days ago. Yeah, and it was it was two just two days prior to that. Right. And uh, it, it, it sat with me, and yesterday at 4 o'clock, I was having a, 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 an absolutely awful day. I just was, and in, in, in it was 21 hours before you and I are supposed to go on. And I came up with just a, a knee-jerk, weird idea. So um, I, I put together an email, and it's titled, You Can Be a Sponsor of Tomorrow's Podcast for $22 with 100% going to Veterans Path Charity. No way. <laughs> So uh, I'm going to read this to you. I sent it to a, a, a handful of my Be Awesome Nation followers. Uh, I said, I'm sorry for the last minute request. And if you feel I sent it to you uh, and shouldn't, my apologies, please delete. Now, those that have decided to continue to read, tomorrow I have John McCaskill, retired Navy SEAL, and now Deputy Executive Director of, for Veterans Path on Be Awesome Podcast to talk about his life and Veterans Path mission. Veterans Path enables returning veterans to rediscover meaning, Purpose and joy in their lives through med mindfulness, meditation, and a safe community. 
On Sunday, John lost one of his fellow team members to suicide, which is exactly what his organization is trying to prevent. Last night, I spoke with John briefly. If you listen to the podcast tomorrow, you will know why briefly. And I left feeling like something more could be done just have him, than to just have him on to talk about Veterans Path. John shared with me that fundraising is way off this year because of COVID. That said, there is no lack of awesome people in my life to step up and help give him a nice surprise. That is where you come in. If everyone in this email donates $22, $22 represents the 22 veterans that take their own lives every day in the U.S., we could impact their organization. You are welcome to donate more and even less. If you are interested in donating, I have a PayPal donate page that will be live until 12.50 p.m. Eastern tomorrow as we go live 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern for the podcast. Here are my asks to Awesome Nation. You can donate, donate here. 100% of your donation will go to Veterans Path. Be Awesome will cover all uh, PayPal fees associated donations. Number two, I'll get to afterwards. All donors' names will be at, that donate up to 12.45 p.m. August 27th, 2020 will be listed and thanked on your YouTube video, podcast, social medias. Appreciate you regardless. Uh, you're in this email because you've made a difference in my life and help me continue to be awesome. Keep being awesome. P.S. The picture on the donate page is from the 2001 Naval Academy graduation with the Blue Angels put on one of the most <laughs> amazing shows. Uh, I was fortunate enough to, to attend last year with an awesome friend and suggest putting it on your must-do list. Um, so over the last... Uh, 18 hours, we had uh, 25 donors. I'm gonna go through them alphabetically. Uh, the total donation uh, that was raised was uh, an amazing uh, number, one, two, three, four, one thousand two hundred thirty-four dollars No way! We're gonna, we're gonna round up to 1,300. Um, Dude. And, this, and we got one more thing, but I, I wanna pay homage to all of the donors. So in alphabetical order, Amy Callahan, AKA my fiance and baby mama, Anna Peach, <laughs> Anna Peach, my mom, Andrew Appleton, who connected to us uh, originally through LinkedIn. Uh, Andy Townsend, a, uh, who feels like a lifelong friend, but a coworker of 15 plus years. Brian Andreco of Just Get Started LLC and a uh, great friend and actually got me started with my podcast uh, originally. Chris Martinetti, friend for 30 years and my uh, go-to electrician after being electrocuted three times. I know I should get a professional. Ooh. Uh, David, David Marcus, uh, director of De Toledo Jewish High School in California that's done countless great things through wildfires in the pre last couple of years. Ed Bass and uh, Albert Bass Associates who are doing a ton of great work. They're a local Eastern company providing signs and shields for social distance requirements. Ed Rossich, CEO of Holidays for the Heroes, uh, flew 64 active military home free of charge round trip uh, and has just started that 501c3 and looks to send 100 people uh, active military home for the holidays. One actually got nice. to see the birth of their first child, which is one of the most amazing things. Uh, Evelyn, awesome. Evelyn Colazzo, one of the most amazing humans. It's, uh, I've been lucky enough to have in my life for uh, 40, 40 of my 45 years to, to guide, mentor, and help me. Isabel Wilson, uh, who is a local Eastern real estate agent, one of the best in the business. Uh, she wanted to make a donation in honor of her cousins, David and Michael, who served in the British Army and Falklands and Gulf Wars. Jamie Javigliano, co-worker and dear friend for 15 plus years. Jason Taylor, EOD, uh, Marine EOD, and uh, just an uh, amazing, amazing human. One of the greatest, uh, greatest guys out there. John and Katie Garcia, uh, John's a, a veteran. Uh, Alpha Facility Solutions, their company. Karen Newman, Director of Eastern Chamber of Commerce. Ken Wirtz, he's Executive Director of Massachusetts Facilities Administrator Association. Les Trackman of Curview, great friend in the gentleman that took me for the Blue Angels flyover last year. My cousin, Liz Pedro, and she's got all angles volleyball. Mike Bremer with 1M, dear friend. Pat Buchanan, uh, co-worker of 20 plus years, uh, great friend, and someone that let me sleep on his floor when I come into town when we were a startup. Uh, Ron McCulley, 10-year cancer survivor given five years, and my brother from another mother out in Colorado. Scott Carpenter, my boss, uh, confidant and great friend for 20 plus years. Sharon Bruce from Connecticut ASBO, who was the first person to give me a stage to stand on and speak. The Teravainen family, Dennis, Michelle, Greta, Gus, Tilly, and Lulu, the little Ewok dog, and Thomas Whitlow, great friend, uh, as well as I just got another donation from Rick Green at Lacar uh, Services. So uh, $1,300 is gonna be in your account. Dude. Today. One more thing, hang on, you like my flag? I love it, it'd be hang awesome, on. I hang see on. it.
So these flags, can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you. Yep. So the, these flags are made by an amazing friend, first responder and owner of uh, Chris Mills Construction and Shovel Town Flag. These flags are made with historic beams and pieces of wood. Our town is rich in history. This flag, I told him about all of this. Uh, this flag is actually made with wood from the Governor Ames estate in Easton, Massachusetts, meaning it's probably from the 1880s. Um, this flag is gonna go on eBay later today. We're gonna auction it off and we're gonna give you 100% of whatever oh that sells gosh. for in a week. So, um, wow. Well, share, uh, share that link with me, man. I'll I will. share that. Uh, oh, that is amazing, Joshua. Thank you so much. Uh, you guys, wow, I, I did not expect this. I cannot say thank you enough uh, for your support, both in bringing me on the podcast and in the last few minutes, what you just shared with me. It's uh, unbelievable. And like, uh, I, I, can't even, I can't even say thank you enough. Thank you, brother. It's, uh, it's a blessing and a curse being on this podcast because when you're here, you know, part of the Be Awesome family. So uh, <laughs> we're, we're in your corner. Um, the little things make a big difference. You're creating a ripple effect that's going to make a large wave in people's lives. And if there's anything I can do anytime you want to do another podcast, publication, publicity, whatever you need, uh, you just keep your head down and keep doing what you're doing and make a difference. And let's get that down to 21 and 20 and keep working until there's no, yeah. more, no more veterans taking their own lives after they've committed to give their lives to this country. So, um, Amen. appreciate you, my friend. This has been, um, an amazing new friendship with you. Uh, I can't wait to get your address. I will send you a cupboard's worth of, of coffee mugs. Get me your, <laughs> get me the family t-shirt sizes so you can wear them proudly around Colorado Springs where it all started and um, yeah. keep doing what you're doing. Do that. Thanks brother. I appreciate it. Appreciate it to you. This has been another episode of the Be Awesome podcast. Um, this has just been uh, an, a, a wild ride. Um, and it's, it's people like John, and all of our past guests and the people, the fact that um, I sent out a small email and we were able to accomplish something in such amount of short amount of time shows the power of having the right people around you, having that um, as Ed Rossich told me a hundred times, that you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with, and I've got a large five. So I can't thank everybody that supports us enough. If you if you if you didn't get an email, I apologize. I don't try to hit everybody up all the time on all the things that we're doing. Um, and if you want to donate, you go to veteranspath.org, and you you can donate there. They're a 501c3. Um, you can donate there and support the, the, their effort. I will put all of their information up and. Uh, I can't thank all of our listeners, supporters. Keep those reviews and ratings coming. That's what gets us uh, up on the charts. I'm not going to get to Joe Rogan status, but I sure would like to get uh, more people listening and learning and having good experiences with us. So uh, just remember, you can be anything. Be awesome.